Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good day everyone, welcome to the course on next generation sequencing technologies, data analysis and applications. Uh, we have started uh, discussing the mapping algorithms and the, uh, we have talked about BLAST, BLAT, etc. and their limitations. In the last class, we have talked about the hash table based mapping algorithms and we have seen hash table based mapping algorithms are really fast, but they require a lot of memory and also they have problem with. Uh, mapping uh, repeat uh, sequ uh, mapping to repeat sequences. Okay, so in this class we'll be talking about suffix tree based mapping algorithm, and we'll talk about how this algorithm can circumvent some of the issues uh, of the hash table. Okay, so this th these are this is the agenda for this class. So we'll talk about suffix tree based mapping algorithm, and then we'll talk about suffix array based mapping algorithm. Okay, so we'll talk about what what is suffix, what is suffix tree, suffix array, etc and then we will see how we can map reads uh, to the reference sequence using these methods. Okay, so, these are the keywords we will come across suffix, tree and array. So, just to briefly recap, uh, we, in the last class we have talked about hash table based mapping algorithm and we have seen this is a very fast mapping process uh, because we are storing this hash table in the memory and we can uh, search very efficiently. Now, hash tables uh, require a lot of memory, right? So, we have talked about uh, 12 to 15 GB uh, of uh, space for storing, for example, human genome uh, hash table. And what we have also seen is that speed of mapping is reduced if you are mapping reads to repeat sequences, right? So, if you have multiple mappings across the genome, the speed is reduced because you need to extend this seed and uh, stitching process for multiple regions, right? So, we ha this actually takes more time. So, is there any alternative strategy, right? So, one of the things that our researchers have come up with is something like a data structure that can handle mapping to repeat sequences. So, at least we can address the issue of this mapping to repeat sequences, okay? And uh, these are the structures, suffix trees and suffix arrays and these have been used in pattern searching, data mining, etc. beforehand. So, how does this work? Okay. And we will now discuss this slowly, right, uh, step by step and we will build these suffix trees and then suffix arrays and we will see how we can search uh, very efficiently using these data structures. Okay. So, what we do is we convert the reference sequence into a suffix tree, uh, we will see in a moment how we do that. And what we see, what you will see also is that repeat sequences are represented by overlapping paths in the tree. Okay? So, which means uh, mapping uh, reads to repeat sequences becomes very, very efficient. Okay? And then we search reads to the suffix tree, again we will we'll discuss this in much more detail uh, as we go along. So, to start with what is a suffix? Okay? So, a suffix is a uh, substring of a string that starts at any position in the string but ends at the end of the string. Okay. So, let us take some examples and then I think it would be clear. Uh, so, here is a string, right? it is uh, shown here in your screen A C G A C C A G G A T C, right? and here are some examples of suffixes. Okay. So, we have G A T C or, or the uh, one uh, below and you can see they can start at any position in the string, but they should end at the end of the string, right? So, it should end with this ATC, right? So, at it ends here at the end of the string, okay? So, that is why these are suffixes. But the one example below here, right? This one is not a suffix, right? Why? Because this does not end at the end of the string, right? So, it ends at the T, that is not the end of the string, okay? So, I hope this is clear now what is a suffix of a string. So, we can take a very uh, quick example, right? And we can write down the suffixes of this string, right? So, we have this here. So, we can have 
what are the suffixes? So, we start with G, right? We have CG, SCG, right? GSCG, and so on, right? So, you can write all of them finally the TTAG, CG, SCG, right? So, these are the all possible suffixes of the string. Okay, so, this, in, uh, this uh, concept will be useful when you actually go for suffix tree construction. Now, the question is what is a suffix tree, right? We understand what is a suffix of a string, but what is a suffix tree? Okay. So, this is a data structure and it contains something like uh, we call root. So, it will have one root and it will have leaves okay. and this is actually built, this data structure is built from the letters of a string. Okay, so, let us go into that. So, what these uh, uh, three contain is paths from root to the leaves. Right? So, we'll, in a moment we will see the structures how they actually look like and we will understand this better. Okay? And these paths they correspond to the suffixes that exist in the string. Right? So, we have seen all possible suffixes and we will have paths corresponding to each of these suffixes. Okay? and all suffixes of the string will be represented by a path that will join the root and it will go to a leaf in that tree. Okay. So, this will be the suffix tree and where all the suffixes of a string are represented. Okay. Now, as you can probably understand right, what we do is we take the genome sequence, re reference genome sequence and we build the suffix tree out of that. And so, size of the tree is proportional to the size of the genome, right. If you have bigger genome, the suffix tree will be larger and also the time taken to build the tree, right, is also proportional to the size of the genome. As you can imagine, for bigger genomes, you will have uh, more number of suffixes, right, and it will take uh, more time, right, to build the suffix tree. So, this is a kind of structure, right, that you will see uh, when you build a suffix tree, right, you will have a root here. Right, as you can see this is the root and you will have leaves, right? these are the leaves that you can see, these are uh, marked with red arrows, so these are all leaves and you have paths from the root to the leaves okay? and all these paths represent the suffixes of a string. Okay? So, now let us take an example, right? let us take a reference sequence and let us build the suffix tree uh, of that reference sequence and then we will understand this better. Okay? So, how do you construct a suffix tree? Right? And uh, we will see this process in a moment. right? So, let us take this reference sequence and these are all the suffixes that are possible right? from this reference sequence. I have just added hash at the end because it denotes the end of the string. Okay? So, we can have them as the leaves and that will say okay, this is the end of the path that right? we cannot go beyond that. Okay? So, we will take all these suffixes and we will build the suffix tree. Okay. So, we start with this a hash, right? we start with the root, we have the base a, then we have the hash right? and we have reached the leaf. Okay. This is the end of this suffix, okay. end of the string. And then we take the next one which is the g a hash, right? this is again highlighted in green and we add this from like a root to a leaf. Right? So, again it ends with this hash here. Okay, so, and we have G and A in between and we can continue this process, we can do this for CGA, we can do this for GCGA, right. So, one of the things you probably will notice, right, so for this one, right, CGA we have added this. Now, GCGA, the first letter is G, right, so G already exists, right, there is a path from the root to G, so we will use that path and then we go and see right whether there is any c after the g so there is none so we have to construct a new path to get to the leaf okay and we can continue this process and we can generate the full suffix tree okay now we can also add the positions right uh, the, that will denote where the suffix starts in the string okay so if this if we say this is the position 1 right then we can add these positions in at the leaf right saying uh, so which will denote okay this suffix starts at this position okay so i will just write the positions here right you can see uh, if you kind of tally with this right so uh, you will see this is this is the uh, position for each of these uh, suffixes okay so this position actually helps us in finding the location right if we are searching now for reads 
in the reference sequence using this suffix tree, we know the location okay, where this suffix actually uh, starts. Okay. So, we will take another example and we will do uh, the suffix tree construction. This is slightly more complex uh, example and as we will see when we go and build the suffix tree. So, as, as before uh, we have now more number of suffixes, we need to consider all of them and we need to find paths right that go from root to leaf for each of these suffixes. Okay. So, uh, so we we'll, we can see right I uh, will going in uh, one step from there, uh, but I will explain. Okay. So, again we do this step by step. So, we have the first the C right and then you have this path here from root to C and then we have this hash right. So, this suffix is now represented in the tree. We take the next one right root to C this path already exists right. So, and from there we take this C and hash right. So, we, we have reached the leaf. So, this suffix is now also represented. The next we have is GCC right. So, what we have is G right from root to G then to C right and then from C here and then hash right. This path uh, represents this suffix. Then we have CGCC right. So, one thing we have seen right this root to C path already exists right we will utilize that, but there is no C to G path yet. So, we will actually have to add that here we will have to add that node here and then we will add this G to C, C to hash right. So, we have reached the leaf and this represent this suffix. Then we have this GC, GCC okay. Now, what we will see right from this root to G to C this path already exists right. And what we need to do then we have to add a path to G right and then to C to C and then we have reached the leaf okay. So, this way we can go on right for all of them we can do this and you will end up with a tree structure like this okay. Uh, you have to do it do, do this by hand. So, I will encourage you to take any example like this and do it yourself and then you will understand the construction process. What you will see like the first step is identify all the suffixes of a string and then generate this structure right this suffix tree structure keeping this simple principle in mind right. So, you should have uh, a path that connects the root to the leaf and represent each of these suffixes right. So, for each of these suffixes you will have a path in the tree okay and as you can see as you will see like we have all the paths here. Okay, so, I hope this is clear now we can do also add the positions again right if we consider this is the position 1 we can again add all these positions in the tree and that will help us uh, identify the location of the read right when you are doing the mapping. Okay, so, what we will now do is we will now uh, also see right how we can actually uh, compress the tree a little bit and then we will see how we search for reads using this suffix tree structure. Okay, so, the first thing is we can compress the tree rather than this really elaborate uh, uh, display right of the whole thing we can actually compress right. So, for example, where we have just one path for example, here we have only uh, this one path right. So, we can actually compress this into just double C right and we can uh, this will be this will look much simpler and similarly for here right this path here this is a single path. So, we can uh, just compress it right into this kind of thing. So, we can do this for so I have done only for part of them uh, you can do for the whole tree like this right this becomes uh, much more clear right it is a much clear structure when you look at it. Okay, so, we will go back to the original tree and we will see how we can actually search for these uh, uh, reads using this suffix tree structure. Okay. So, that is what we are going to do the steps are uh, you start at the root and you start matching letters from the read and you continue till the full read sequence has been found okay. So, this is very simple right we start at the root and we go on one by one and we start matching letters okay. So, let us take this example of GAG okay and we will try to uh, identify this GAG here okay. So, so here we have right we have this G okay you can see this green base right. So, we start from the root and the first base we look at is G and we see okay root to g there is a path. So, we, we are taking this. So, we have identified g there is a match. Next space is a right and this is where we have the match right g a and then the last space which is the g and we have identified this g 
Okay, so we have identified or found the full string, right? Full read in the suffix tree. So this is the GAG. And once we have found, we can also look at the location, right? The position is sixth position, right? And if you go back to the origin string, you will see, okay, this GAG occurs at the sixth position of the reference genome. Okay, so it sounds very simple, right? The search process becomes very simple. And we will take now another example and this is a slightly interesting example, we will see in a moment why that is the case. Okay. So, this example is GCG, we are now searching for GCG in the tree. Okay. We start at the root, the first letter is G okay. and we have found this part here G. The next one is C okay. and we have this G to C path here and then the last letter is G and we have found G. Okay. Okay, so, you see we have found this GCG here. Okay. What about the location? Okay. So, one of the things you see is that this is part of two paths. right? So, we have one path going in this direction, another path going in this direction and they are uh, located in two different positions in the reference string. Right? And what it means is that this sequence is repeated in the reference sequence. Uh, where when you construct the three, they actually overlapping uh, with each other, right? Because of the structure, right? The structure is such that these repeat sequences will overlap. Okay, so we can then identify. Okay, there are two positions where we find where we find this read matching uh, position four and position eight because we have two paths that are going through these uh, uh, nodes, right? So GCG. Okay, so what you see is that searching for repeat sequences is actually very easy in this kind of structure. right? So, you do not have to kind of worry about this repeating this process multiple times across multiple paths uh, like we do in hash table based algorithms. Okay, so, we will take now another example which is GTG okay? uh, and we will repeat the same process. Okay? So, we will start with G uh, again taking from the root and we come up to this point. right? but then we are stuck right? because there is no T, uh, G to T path. right? So, the next letter is T and there is no path from G to T. So, there is no match in the tree. Okay? So, this is something that you probably then realize that this is a limitation of this kind of structure. Right? So, it cannot uh, actually uh, identify any mapping if there is, mis if there are, there is a mismatch in the read data. Now you might say, okay, maybe we can circumvent in this way, uh, uh, some way, right? Uh, maybe we can allow for certain mismatches and then see if there are other matches later on, etc. So those can be done, right? So for example, you can think that if you allow this, there is no T, so maybe we can allow both these paths, and we can say, okay, there is A and C, but after that we have G here, we also have G here, and these could be the matches, right? So you can have, you can allow for mismatches. Now, this is something that can be done, uh, but uh, researchers have not uh, kind of uh, invested so much time and energy because there are other limitations of suffix trees, so which we will discuss now. So, what are the advantages of suffix tree based methods? So, what we have seen is that we can find matches very, very quickly. We have seen some very simple examples and we can find multiple mappings or mapping to repeat sequences quite easily, right? It is uh, very quick because of the, uh, the specific data structure that we are using this uh, repeat sequences, the path uh, actually overlap in the tree, but there are major drawbacks okay? and that is why uh, we have not invested that much uh, time or energy into developing this further. Right? So, one is of course, it requires a large amount of memory or storage right? uh, when you are uh, generating this tree structure. So, it has been seen it takes about 30 to 35 GB uh, space for human genome. Right? So, this is something that you then cannot run on an ordinary uh, laptop or desktop, you need specialized uh, servers for doing this work. Okay? And another thing is the building the suffix tree, right? it is a very elaborate and complex data structure and it is quite time consuming, but we can argue right? Okay, once you have built uh, this for a specific reference sequence, you can store it and you can use it. But then uh, the first drawback comes in because it takes a lot of storage right? uh, uh, to get uh, keep it in, in your hard drive. And what we have seen at the last is that it also poor at handling mutations or sequencing errors right when there are mismatches it cannot find those mappings. But then of course, uh, we have discussed right we can perhaps design certain ways to circumvent this problem, but then because of the first two limitations uh, it is actually not worth it. 
So, can we reduce the um, amount of memory that we are using? Right? Is there any way that we can actually uh, reduce the memory usage because this is a major limitation. Okay? So, uh, can we address some of these drawbacks and the fast drawbacks especially? Right? So, uh, it turns out that there is a way right? and it is uh, through the use of suffix arrays. Okay? So, what are suffix arrays? So, this is again a set of suffixes of the genome that are sorted lexicographically. Okay. So, we will see again take the examples and we will see how we actually uh, build this suffix array. Okay. So, here is a reference string again right, and we have the suffixes all possible suffixes of that reference string and we are also again denoting the end of the string by this hash sign right, and we have written down all the suffixes here. So, if you remember the definition that we have just mentioned is that suffix array is requires lexicographical sorting right or alphabetical sorting right so we sort these uh, uh, suffixes right lexicographically and we also have the start positions right so we can map the start position of each of these suffixes uh, along with the suffix uh, suffix sequences right and then we can do a lexicographical sorting okay so this sorting is works in this way uh, if you are not familiar with lexicographical sorting is that we first look at the first letter right. So, let us see. So, here among all these suffixes we have this A comes first right. So, so this these suffixes will come at the top right this will occur first right. So, lexicographical order is A will come first then it will be C then it will be G then it will be T right. So, we start with that. So, we start with this suffixes that uh, have A in the first place. Now, then if the first letter is same then we look at the second letter. So, in this case this is G, this one is G here and this one is T which means this one will come afterwards right A T. So, because T comes after G. Okay. Now, the second letter is also same for these two suffixes we look at the third letter. So, they are also same okay. we look at the fourth letter then they are also same G and G and then we look at the fifth letter okay. and finally, we see this one has A and that one has C. Okay. So, which means lexicographically this one would be the first one this will be the second one and so on. Okay. So, this is how we do the sorting right and you will see this one will come first this S C C G A G C G A right because of this occurrence of A then we have the uh, other one that we have talked about then we have the A T 1 right and you understand why that is the case. We repeat this process for all the suffixes right. So, then after A you have the suffixes that start with C right you can see here. Uh, and then we have the suffixes that start with G right and the finally, the suffix that starts with T. Okay. And again the principle same if we look at the first letter if it is the same we look at the second letter if it is the same we look at the third letter and so on and then finally, we sort them lexicographically right somewhere it will be diff, uh, uh, give you this difference and you can sort lexicographically. Now, once you sort this lexicographically the sorted uh, start positions also appear right. So, you are also changing uh, sorting the start positions and you, you get this sorted start positions. Now, what is the point of this uh, sorting right why do you do this sorting at all. Okay. Now, what happens is that now if you want to search for reads it turns out that uh, you can actually sort or uh, search for reads very efficiently through this sorted data structure. Okay, so, here are some points bef uh, before we actually go to the search part right. So, what we store is the suffixes we do not store them we only store the sorted start positions. Why that is the case because we can actually recover the suffix from each start position and the full reference genome sequence. Okay, so, if we know the start position we can say okay, this is the uh, suffix uh, that we are uh, working with right. So, that, that is actually uh, more uh, efficient. Uh, way of storing right. So, we only store the positions and the reference genome sequence we have and we can generate the suffixes whenever required. So, how do you actually uh, search uh, through these suffixes right. So, we have these sorted uh, suffix uh, positions right. So, we have this uh, suffix array and this is the array which is only the positions okay. and we do not store these suffixes in the data. Okay. Now, how do you actually search this read sequence? So, we have so we, this is a multi step process as we have uh, first discussed the uh, first step only. So, we actually generate uh, suffixes from the position. So, once we have stored the suffix array and the genome sequence, we can generate the suffixes from the positions. We compare with read sequence, okay. Uh, we will see in how do you actually compare 
and we do lexicographical uh, sorting right as you have seen and that makes the search process very very efficient ok. So, again let us take an example right and that will be uh, much easier to understand ok. So, let us take this read GCG ok we have taken this example uh, in case of suffix tree also and let us see how we can find this uh, GCG uh, here ok. Ok, so how do you actually search ok, so what happens is that we can use some sort of search algorithms uh, is something called a binary search ok. So, you can actually break down this uh, arrays into two parts and then see ok whether this GCG will part will be in this part on, on the other part right and if you see the other part you then again break it down into two sets and search through that. So, we are not going into the uh, details of those algorithms the search algorithms, but uh, it will be uh, enough to know that because of the sorting that we have done the lexicographical sorting we can use a very efficient search process like binary search which allows us to find these reads very very quickly ok. So, what we do is then look for this and we find ok these are the suffixes uh, that start with uh, this uh, GCG ok and I have not discussed the search process itself, but it, it, because uh, it's, uh, it because of this sorting it is a very efficient process. So, once we have found this we can look at the locations right you have 4 and 8 and this is where uh, this uh, read actually occurs. So, so, if you remember this is uh, this read occurs at two places this maps to multiple regions and here we see them uh, because they are mapping to two different positions right two different suffixes uh, starting from two different positions. So, this means uh, this this is a repeat sequence that is present in the reference you know ok. So, what are the advantages and drawbacks of uh, suffix arrays right. So, they take uh, so the first advantage is that they take less space compared to suffix trees and it is about 12 to 15 GB for human genome. Again this is comparable to the hash table right uh, and one of the things uh, that uh, also an ad advantage, advantage of this method right uh, compared to hash table is that it can map reads to uh, multiple positions or repeat sequences very easily. Uh, again because of the lexicographical sorting. But the problem remains right the drawback major drawback is that you can it cannot map reads uh, with mutations or sequencing errors right it, it is uh, very poor at, at this kind of mapping ok. Again we can think about some some way of uh, kind of overcoming this problem, but then again one of the issues we have seen is that the memory requirement uh, is quite large right. And I mean this is the reason why we start, started looking for other algorithms right compared to hash table because of the memory requirement uh, this kind of memory may not be available uh, in uh, normal desktop or laptops right. So, this is one tool that actually uses uh, this suffix array method and I encourage you to go through uh, the reference and you can uh, probably see how they are utilizing the suffix array based method uh, for searching uh, reads. So, here are the references uh, that we have used uh, for this uh, class. Now, to summarize we have talked about the suffix trees and suffix arrays and we have talked about first uh, the suffixes right. So, you, you understand how we can generate suffixes from a reference string and we have talked about the suffix array data structure and suffix tree data structure. And what we have seen suffix trees and suffix arrays they enable really fast mapping because of the structure you can search reads very very quickly ok. However, what we have seen suffix tree actually takes a lot of memory and space and in case of human genome this is about 30 to 35 GB right. So, if you have to use that kind that much of RAM you cannot run it on a normal desktop computer you have to use a dedicated server or a uh, computational server. Suffix arrays they actually address this issue to some extent right they reduce the memory requirement, uh, but also keep the property of fast mapping because of this lexicographical sorting. So, we have discussed this right. So, the suffix trees require a lot of space memory and uh, this is reduced in case of suffix arrays. And what we have seen the strength lies is that suffix trees and suffix arrays they can map reads to multiple positions with ease. So, if you have a read uh, and that is mapping to multiple positions or that come from repeat sequences in the genome, then this kind of structure is very very useful uh, for a quick mapping ok. And this is something that uh, will come up very often if you are looking at human genome or other genomes uh, high, 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 uh, like uh, higher eukaryotes or mammalian genomes, 
you will see a lot of repeat sequences present okay? and you will get reads, reads uh, from uh, these repeat regions and during the mapping process you will probably have to map them to multiple locations or identify these locations where these reads uh, might come from. Okay? And in that case if you are using hash table it takes a lot of time, right? it will take increase the time requirement substantially and in, in those cases suffix tree and suffix array can help a lot. Right? So, you have seen in suffix tree you have this overlapping uh, path right, that, that is generated in case of repeat sequences. Uh, so, so you just search through one single path and you identify all the positions where this read can map to. Okay. In suffix arrays because of the lexicographical sorting it, can, it is again very easy that right? you will have multiple uh, uh, suffixes where you will find this read, but they are because of the sorting they will be uh, very close to each other and you can find them very, very easily. So, this is, this is the biggest strength of these methods, but what we have seen that these methods are very poor at mapping reads that contain uh, mismatches right? or uh, so these ma mismatches could be generated because of mutations in the uh, read or the, uh, or the sample that you are working with or because of the sequencing errors uh, that, that, that happen during the sequencing process. Right? So, uh, they cannot really handle this kind of reads, they cannot map those reads. Uh, but of course, we have also talked about some alternatives right, where we can actually uh, come up with certain methods that can allow uh, this, uh, this kind of mapping. But given the limitation, right, for example, uh, the memory and space requirement, this is something that uh, has not been uh, worked upon that much because what we want at the end is a method that is fast, right? this can handle uh, this kind of mapping to multiple repeats uh, positions. Right, but also does not take too much space or memory. Right, so we should be able to do this mapping process in a normal desktop or laptop computer. Right, that's the goal, and that's why uh, we, we have not uh, kind of gone in this direction where we are adapting the suffix tree or suffix array based methods uh, for mapping reads with mutations or sequencing errors. So in the next class, we'll talk about certain methods that can actually uh, kind of do all of this, uh, but with uh, very low memory requirement. Thank you.